they walk out of the doors wherever they happen to be, off a boat or off a plane. They're on an island 800 miles from the nearest place that normally helps you with these type of things. There is nothing here for them. Uh, they are scared. Dutch Harbor is a gritty, wind-lashed Alaskan town that sits on an island 800 miles away from Anchorage. People come here from around the world, the dreamers and the desperate, hoping to earn quick money in the town's booming fish and crabbing industries. But it's a tough life, glorified in the popular TV show, The Deadliest Catch. 270 miles to the south in Dutch Harbor, Alaska, the time bandit begins her final offload of the season. Very successful trip. We did what we needed to do. The boys were tired, crying like little babies. But many people arrive, sometimes at great personal expense, only to be laid off or to find there are no jobs. I thought I can make more money than I used to make. I make like a, a year 10,000, but they told me here you can make a year 100,000, 70,000. But it's lie. I don't want to exactly and uh, live in the Dodge Harbor, but I can find jobs, and then I don't have a choice for the moment. I've seen men, big, strong, tough men, uh, just tears running down their eyes when I um, tell them that they're important and that uh, I'm going to do everything I can to help them. And John Honan is pastor at the Unalaska Christian Fellowship. Since 1994, he has helped people stranded in Dutch Harbor. Uh, we do not have a shelter of any kind for people who are in temporary emergency situations. But there is one place here at the end of the world that Honan says would be ideal for people at the end of their rope. Here, this is where people got loaded, smashed, and robbed on a regular basis. People beat each other up. This is the former Elbow Room, a bar that in its heyday in the 1970s and 80s was said to be one of the most notorious drinking establishments in North America. You know, back in those days, it was just insane. You know, it was like, this place was like the Wild West frontier. You would have fishermen coming in with forty, fifty thousand dollars in their pocket. Right? Just, but it was the mentality. That that's what they did. They went in and they would just let it all hang out and create trouble. Now the building sits dark and vacant, but John Honan wants to change that. The dream is that this would no longer exist. This particular building will be completely, totally destroyed, hauled away, and a facility would be built here, designed specifically to help people who are in temporary emergency situations. The shelter plan is a source of great passion for Honan. He sees deep symbolism in the bar's conversion. It has been a hole to hell for a lot of relationships and a lot of lives to take a place that uh, an immoral atmosphere, loose atmosphere, and to think that it could become a house where people would find help, find hope. But for some here, the old elbow room stirs painful memories, and a shelter, they say, would again invite the wrong kinds of neighbors. There's a lot of people that don't want it. After my son was killed, after, you know, because they were partying at the elbow room, he was killed by drunk drivers, his own friends. You know, it's really a hard thing when you lose a kid. He was only 29. And so now that the bar is closed, it's quiet. I've never heard it that quiet down there ever at night. In September, the town's zoning commission rejected the shelter plan, dealing John Honan's dream a severe blow. He's trying to build a shelter somewhere else, though he still holds out hope that he can bring redemption to a bar and its dubious past. I'm still hoping that something can happen at the elbow room. What are the odds? The odds are not very good. People sometimes have a change of heart. Whether this happens or not, it doesn't stop anything. The people still need help. We'll still do what we can. It's just a rough road.